Okay, it's a great honor for me to host a uh, legendary uh, Jim Rogers. It's been a long time, and I would like to tell you, welcome to uh, Turkey, welcome to FX TV again. How is everything, Jim? Here I talk. I'm delighted to see you again. It's been at least 10 years, so I'm very, very pleased to see you. Uh, I would love to be in Turkey. Istanbul is really a wonderful city, sometimes, sometimes, but I don't have any investments there, there but I'm looking, I'm looking. Okay. Uh, it's been a long time, as I told you before. It's been, I think, 2012. I hosted you in CNBC Studios in Istanbul, and it's been a long time. The last thing I remember, it's, uh, it was you are a fan of uh, gold investment. Are you still so? Well, yeah, I've, I've owned gold for 30 or 40 years. I've never sold any. I, I have, if I were buying something today, I would buy silver. I still own both, uh, but I'm not buying either right now. Here's a little gold. Um, I want to buy more of both, but not now. Uh, could you please tell me why not now? Because they've both been very strong recently, and I don't like to buy things when they're going up. I like to buy things when they're down, when people people are selling yeah it, it, it's a simple i think it's a, a rule of thumb you know when things go up you sell you 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 buy it when it's down well my parents told me to buy low and sell high it was that easy the problem our talk is what is low and what is high it's easy it's easy to say it it's not so easy to do it but I am waiting for gold and silver to go down again, and then I'll buy if they do. Yeah, as people like you, very gifted, it uh, seems very simply to buy uh, when it's time, it's low, and, and it's sell when it goes up. But the thing is, uh, what is the story right now? Are you expecting to see a dollar end? I mean, the dollar is not going to be a reserve currency anymore. Well, the US, dollar, the U.S. is shooting itself in the foot. A reserve currency is supposed to be neutral that anybody can use it at any time for anything. But now if the U.S. gets angry at you, they put sanctions on you and you cannot use the dollar. So many people are looking for something to compete with the dollar. China, Russia, India, Brazil, Iran, many people are looking for something and it's going to accelerate after what America just did in Russia and Ukraine, more and more people are gonna look for something to compete with the US dollar, including me. And if you know what it is, Artan, please don't announce it. Send me an email so I can buy some. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'll use the cryptic message to mail you because you know that everybody is wondering if the cryptocurrencies will how the new U.S. dollar, I mean, in terms of the reserve currency is concerned? Well, I don't, I know that the people, there are many people who are trading cryptocurrencies, making money. Uh, I am not. I also know that many cryptocurrencies have already disappeared and gone to zero. I do know that all money is going to be on computer someday. It already is in China. In China, you can't take a taxi with cash. You have to have computer money. But when the, when the U.S. and the rest say, okay, this is now money, I don't think, I know the U.S. is not going to say, but if you want to use that money over there, you can use their money too. That's not the way governments work. They like control, they like monopoly. Uh, I don't think the other, if the other things become successful, they will be outlawed, regulated, taxed or something. Uh, in the meantime, I have gold and silver. Hard talk for thousands of years. You live in Turkey. You've been around a long time. You know that when things go wrong, people look for gold and silver. I'm a peasant. I'm an old peasant. I know when things go wrong, I want to have some silver under the bed. I want to have some gold in the closet because I know that the gold and silver will always be okay. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure this is the right uh question, but do you think that there's that trade-off between gold and cryptocurrencies in terms of uh, safe haven? Well, when things are collapsing, gold and silver have always been places that people turn to. 
Um, if I were buying either today, I would buy silver instead of gold. Silver is cheaper. Silver is still down 50% from its all-time high. Gold is near its all-time high. But, but our talk, for thousands of years, people have used gold and silver. Uh, they also use wheat. They use you know, other things. But gold and silver has always been around and certainly always will be in our lifetimes. I see. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, oh, we are in an inflationary uh, world right now. And oh, oh, I mean, even the uh, greatest economies like US is suffering from inflation. But on the other hand, uh, US and Russia in a conflict uh, uh, for example, in Ukraine right now, uh, what are they really trying to do when you are suffering from inflation, but you uh, cause the inflation at the same time? Well, that's a very, very, very good point. Uh, yes, there's inflation everywhere. It's getting worse and it's accelerating because of the war in Ukraine and Russia. I mean, Ukraine and Russia produce a lot of food, a lot of oil, a lot of metals. A lot of the things that we use are going up now because of the war in the, between Ukraine and Russia. No, they are adding to the inflation, but at least they own oil, at least they own wheat, so they will survive a little bit. Some countries don't have any wheat, don't have any oil, don't have anything, so they're suffering badly. Okay, uh, you you issued a warning, as far as I can remember, U.S. dollar being used as instrument of war. We have a war right now. What we don't know, like trade war, like I mean, cold war. What, what is this story? Well, there is a shooting war between Ukraine and and the U.S. Uh, between Ukraine and Russia right now, and the U.S. has said, "Okay, we will not let you use U.S. dollars, Russia." So, people, even if you're a friend of the U.S., you say, "Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute." If they get angry at me, they'll do that to me too. So many people are now trying to find something to compete with the U.S. dollar. Even our friends. I mean, I'm an American. I'm trying to find something else because I can see that this is not going to be good for the U.S. Using the reserve currency of the world's medium of exchange as a weapon of war means you, it's not going to be neutral anymore and it's not going to survive as a world's reserve currency. It's not going to end this week, but it's going to end. Okay. Uh, you think that this war will take a longer time to solve? Uh, I, I don't see that this war is doing anybody any good. Maybe Mr. Putin, but and so I suspect it's going to end soon, um, which is why I'm waiting to buy gold and silver. If it does end soon, gold and silver will go down and then I can buy more. Uh, I don't see why anybody wants this war to continue. Mr. Mm. Putin has made his point. The, Iranian, the, the Ukrainians want to survive. But, but Arnok, you should ask them. Don't ask me. I'm sitting in Singapore. You're there. You're close. Yes. Yes. But, but, but I do remember that uh, your ex-president uh, uh, said Trump, I was the only president that there was no more in my presidency. And you sh it means that you should expect to see more war. Do you think that uh, he left a bomb into the, uh, I mean, Biden's presidency time? Uh, did, did, did he do this uh, on purpose? Uh, um, purposely, deliberately, U.S. is uh, one thing a war between the, I mean, uh, democratic countries like uh, Europeans, English people, and U.S. against China, Russia, and Iran and North Korea. Well, you know, in 19, in 2014, there was a coup in Ukraine instigated by the U.S. The U.S. organized that coup and made that coup happen. And a few years before that, the U.S. had said, we're going to take Ukraine into, into NATO. 
Well, <laughs> Russia said, no, 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 you're not. I mean, for us to say you're going to take Ukraine into NATO was pretty, it did not make Russia happy. And if you look at a map, you'll see why. And then we instigated a coup in 2014. So now we're paying the price for all of this. And of course, we're blaming it on the Russians, but we instigated all of this. We have been saying we're going to make Central Europe part of NATO and part of Europe. And Russia said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, these countries are on our borders and we don't want American tanks on our borders. And I don't blame them. I wouldn't either. I mean, if America, if suddenly Russia had a had troops in Mexico, I'm sure America would go crazy. We'd go crazy if Mexico made a, an alliance with Russia. So I can certainly understand the Russians and I don't know why, why America had to do this. And I don't understand why Mr. Putin had to attack either at both. Both are involved here. Okay. What is the next move of Fed in terms of this war? I mean, uh, all uh, the inflationary raw materials are growing up very rapidly. What, what, what is the next move? What, what are you expecting to see? Well, aren't I, the, federal, the central banks everywhere, including Turkey, have been printing a lot of money uh, over the past few years. Um, nothing like it's never been this much printing in world history. And that has always led to inflation. When you have major countries printing a lot of money and borrowing a lot of money and spending a lot of money, it has always led to inflation. So it's happening now. We're going to certainly have the worst inflation in a long, long time. And it's not going to be over soon. So I hope everybody watching this figures out a way to protect themselves because more inflation is coming. These central bankers don't know what they're doing. They think that they can save their jobs by printing money. They don't care about you and me. They care about their jobs. Well, I, I care about you and me. And money printing is not good. Okay. Uh, but we are the only country not driving the interest rates up right now. We are printing money and we don't have any idea uh, if a uh, central bank is not going to r uh, raise uh, interest rates up. Uh, what are you are expecting to see if you don't uh, uh, interest rates up uh, in an inflationary uh, area? Well, I have seen what Turkey is doing. Uh, we all have. I, I don't know if it's going to work. It's certainly not what most people would think. But if it works, our talk, perfect. It'll be great. If Turkey can do something that nobody thinks will work, that will be good for Turkey. It'll be good for all of us because we'll learn something. But in my experience and in history, people who print money usually wind up with a lot of inflation. And people who lower interest rates usually wind up with a lot of inflation. Turkey has a new theory. I hope it works. We'll see. Okay. Uh, what is the, I mean, solution for investors to protect their savings in an inflationary uh, environment? Well, inflation means prices are going higher. And if you own the things that are going higher in price, if you own wheat and copper and silver and oil, you'll probably, you'll be okay. And you might even make money. So my, what I'm doing is I own a, a lot of commodities because if, the, if we're going to have inflation, that means prices are going higher. Plus, you know, there's some things happening in the world. We, it looks like we're all going to have electric automobiles. Well, electric automobiles use much more copper than does a, a gasoline automobile, a petrol automobile. And people haven't been opening copper mines in a long time. So some of these things like lead and copper, will be go the demand will be going up a lot and the supply isn't there. So you have money printing, you have fundamentals changing. I, I own commodities and if I'm buying things, it's mainly commodities. Okay, uh, I don't know if you follow, but we are the only country uh, hosting the Ukrainians and the Russians. I mean, uh, uh, one day, uh, you, uh, yesterday, uh, we hosted uh, Lavrov and the 
a Ukrainian uh, minister, uh, and uh, there will be a, a peace um, might be expected. Uh, the Kremlin said I, it, it will cause a new a meeting between Zelensky and Putin. Uh, on, and on the other hand, we are the uh, third country he suffered more, much more like Russia and Ukrainian, because uh, we have uh, tourists uh, from Ukrainians, Ukraine and Russia, and all, uh, and we are importing, you know, grains and others, uh, raw materials uh, from uh, Russia and Ukraine. And also we need some finance abroad. Uh, our, I mean, uh, cost of borrowing has been uh, developing, I mean, increasing very rapidly. What do you think that Turkey will suffer more or Turkey will, uh, I mean, have an advantage of uh, drawing some money from the Russians and Ukrainians? Uh, because, you know, there is no chance for them to use the SWIFT system or the credit cards using and uh, all over the world. Well, Artak, if, if Turkey can cause peace, hooray, hooray for Turkey. Uh, it would be wonderful. You would save the world and you would help Turkey because then their trade would renew. There would be a lot more trade in your part of the world and everywhere else. And we would all be very, very happy. Uh, it's going to take more than that to solve everybody's problems. But that would be a very good beginning if you can do it. And yes, you buy a lot of the things that Russia and, and Ukraine sell. So it would certainly be good for you if you could bring the peace. It doesn't solve the problem of your currency yet, but it does help if there's peace in your, in your neighborhood. I see. Uh, and what about the China? Are you expecting to see a new conflict or invasion from China to Taiwan? Well, America seems like it wants war. Um, America's nearly always been at war in its history, only a few years. Mr. Trump said there was no war in his presidency, and it's very rare that America is not at a war somewhere. So, and America seems to want war with China and Russia, which is insane, which is crazy, but something will probably happen in the next few years. I hope it does not but something may well happen which will cause more war and America will be involved. I hope that everybody stays out of it. I hope Turkey stays out of it and maybe things will calm down. But I, I know American history and America has had many, many, many wars. It's crazy. Okay. Um, as the last question, what do you are expecting to see in terms of uh, 2020, uh, uh, 22, 23. At the beginning, you said that you don't have any investment in Turkey. What is the main theme or what is the driving force uh, for you to decide uh, whether to invest or not to invest for a country? Well, you, usually you have to have a sound finances, not too much debt or not debt that's skyrocketing. You have to have a sound, a solid currency and you have to have good trade balances. Those are the basic things that people look for uh, and a stable currency. Turkey does not have a stable currency now, as you know. Your government is trying to so solve that problem. If you can solve that problem, Obviously, Turkey, and if you can solve that problem and the peace problem in Ukraine, Turkey would probably be a very good place to invest again. You, ma you mean that if you don't have a stable cur currency, it's not an issue uh, for our criteria to decide whether your, I mean, stocks, your companies are very cheap or not? Well, it's a... It's a lot easier to invest in a country with a stable currency instead of a currency which is collapsing every week, every month, every year. Uh, I Maybe it's because I'm lazy, but when I see a lot of currency problems, Venezuela, for instance, has a lot of currency problems now. 
I am not investing in Venezuela for that reason. And of course, there are sanctions. I'm an American. But if I can find countries that have had currency problems where things are stabilizing, that is usually a very exciting place to invest. It means that you can invest in North Korea. Well, I, I want to invest in North Korea, but I'm, I'm an American and it's illegal. Amer <laughs> America makes it illegal for us to invest in North I wish I could. You probably can invest in North Korea. You should. It's very cheap. You think that America will allow me to invest in North Korea? You know, we are using the SWIFT system right now. Well, unless you're an American, a few countries like America have made it illegal to invest in North, in North Korea. South Korea is illegal, Japan is illegal, America is illegal. But most countries can invest in North Korea if you want to. And you don't need SWIFT. The SWIFT makes it easier. But you can invest in North Korea doesn't have anything. They need clothes. They need electricity. They need food. So whatever you know about, if you can invest in North Korea, you're probably going to be successful. It's not always going to be a disaster. I see. Uh, Jim, it was always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for joining us. It's been a long time, but I can assure you that I let you a long distance uh, right after now. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Thanks for joining us. Well, Arnold, I'm very, very keen on FX TV now. I'm keen on you, so I hope we can do it again. I hope we don't wait 10 years before we do it again. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.